Hey guys, I have a new video out for you today. Um, today we're going to be installing a lightweight battery on the Subaru STI S209. Here's the factory battery and um, you know from my previous video I mentioned that uh, I wanted to take this out and put something more lightweight. One of the things I want to do is try to remove weight um, specifically in the front of the vehicle um, in order to have better weight distribution and uh, better weight balance uh, which I think is going to improve handling of this vehicle. You know, my overall goal is obviously to strip as much weight as possible, but I want to do so in a way that maintains the, the weight distribution. So, you know, on my journey to weight reduction, I'm going to be documenting exactly where I'm removing the weight from, um, not just how much weight, but where it's coming from. So here's what we're replacing the OEM battery with. Uh, in my opinion, this is the best option currently for lightweight batteries that won't leave you stranded. Uh, this is the anti-gravity battery ATX30HD. It's a lithium ion battery with much higher uh, cranking amps. So this one is 970 cranking amps, which is, you know, in my opinion, it's pretty overkill for my application, but, um, you know, it gives me some peace of mind while I'm driving and I know that it's going to um, perform well and won't leave me stranded somewhere while also stripping out as much weight as possible. So in terms of weight, this thing weighs 7.8 pounds. So how are we going to mount this battery? Well, Mitch from Melee Designs gave me this custom battery mount. This is the 900 series mount that Mitch and Melee Design offers to mount batteries like the ATX 30HD. And um, you know, the work that they've done on this is stellar, really. Um, you can see that this will be a great piece um, aesthetically, uh, will really fit in well in the engine bay uh, to, to mount the battery. And so, Together, I think with the mount as well as the, the battery, should be a little more than the 7.8 pounds, maybe closer to 8 or 9 pounds. Um, I'll put it in the, the description below exactly how much this weighs, just so that I can document um, the whole process. Okay, so to remove the OEM battery, it should be relatively straightforward. Uh, you just uh, loosen this terminal as well as this one. Um, I think the hardest part will be unclipping this, which involves putting a flathead in there um, and then um, you kind of just pull on this and it should come out. Um, and then we have two 10 millimeter nuts shown here, one here, one here. Um, this should come out and we should be able to take out this battery and then I'll weigh it. I just weighed it. This battery weighs 33.2 pounds. So I just confirmed this thing weighs 2 pounds. So the 7.8 plus 2 is 9.8. Just call it 10. So 33 minus 10, we get a 23 pound weight savings. Alright, so after cleaning it up a bit, this is what it should look like. Um, here is the grounding bolt hole. So uh, I'm gonna have to unscrew this. This is also a 10 millimeter. This is the grounding, and um, then we can 
um, start mounting the new battery after we remove that. So the next step is mounting this guy. To do this, we have to feed in, uh, yeah, we have to feed in this guy through this hole shown here in order to bolt it up from the bottom. And then we also have to feed in this guy um, to where the grounding mount is. So it's those two um, parts that will secure the battery mount. So anyone who's doing this, don't make the same mistake that I made. So while I was feeding this through here, and I was screwing this uh, grounding mount, this thing fell into the cavity, and I had to fish it out with a magnet, basically. Not fun. So the moment you feed this through, this hole, don't start working on this. Um, I would get some tape and just tape it here so it doesn't fall again into the crevices. Um, yeah, and once this is uh, loosely secured, now I can focus on putting that, uh, screwing in the bottom mount in here by feeding in, um, using this as a way to kind of get it positioned correctly and then feeding this in. So, wish me luck. Alright, so I was able to feed the line through and then tighten it down and also get this loosely secured in the mounting hole. Pain in the ass install, for me at least, because it fell through that cavity and I had to pick it up with the magnet, but now it's all set and actually I thought this thing would be a little higher. It's really uh, saving a lot of space here. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a little hard to see, which is, it's okay. I mean, um, you know, the details are there, and so anyone who's looking for it, you can, you can see that it has that awesome um, engraving of the S29, number 83 over 209. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish tightening everything, and we'll see how the battery looks. All right, guys. Uh, so it's the next day and I just want to give an update on this battery. It actually took me quite a while to install this battery correctly. Um, so there's a couple things that you need to do actually. This battery doesn't actually come with all the hardware you need to install it the correct way. Um, so let me just show you here. So what, um, now the terminals are in the normal position. Um, compared to the stock OEM battery. And before you saw it in different orientations. So in order to get it like this, you need to actually get some spacers and as well as a longer hex bolt. And this battery is actually four, you can mount it four different ways. So um, you can actually put the terminal the other way and it can't mount this way unless you have some spacers underneath so that you have a flat surface to mount the terminals on. So that's exactly what I did. I rotated it 90 degrees and was able to mount the terminal this way so that you can mount both of them now the correct way. Uh, secondly, if you mount it this way, you can use, you know, you can use this cover, which is nice for extra added protection. And um, you know, the original terminals for the car fit right on. It actually works quite perfectly. Um, so when you're installing this, this is the way you want to do it. So in total you want to get six uh, 
six millimeter spacers, uh, three on each side, as well as um, I think they're six by uh, fifteen or six by fourteen millimeter um, hex bolts. Basically, longer six millimeter hex bolts, so that with the spacers you can uh, you're able to bolt these down. And by doing so, you can have a, a nice clean install like the one shown. And the best part is that you can use you know, the these plastic covers. Um, basically, everything has, um, that you can put all the protective parts that are OEM back on this. So I apologize that I wasn't able to capture the full install for this. Um, you know, that was really my plan, but I, I was having so many issues in terms of uh, correctly mounting it in the, in the right orientation. And so, you know, I finally got it right just by having uh, the correct washers, uh, sorry, the correct spacers in there as well as the longer hex bolts um, and mounting the terminals not the way it it normally comes but you know mounting it 90 degrees um, so that you can have it mounted the correct way um, as I mentioned before this thing once in you're, you're saving about 25 pounds and I just want to mention you know you're saving 25 pounds where you want it the driver's side front is the, the 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 place where you want to save the most weight actually because um when looking at the cross weights actually there's more weight on this side compared to the passenger side and i think sti did this because um you know subaru cares more about the japanese market and in the japanese market the seat is actually on the the right side it's right hand drive right and so in order to get that 50 50 balance um, they put more weight on this side for the Japanese market. But for us, since we're on the, in the U.S., we're left-hand drive, so we, we sit on the left side, and the left side has more weight, so it's actually not that 50-50 ideal balance. So by removing more weight on the driver's side, we get closer to the ideal 50-50 cross weight. Um, so yeah, um, this is basically the... The battery install for this. Um, I really like it so far. I did test drive this and the battery is functioning perfectly. In terms of how it drives, I mean, there's really not much I can say. I mean, every little bit helps, but you're not going to feel any major difference on the street. Um, I would say it's not until you do a combination of all the different weight reduction modifications that you want to do. For instance, battery, seats, exhaust, wheels, tires, um, that's when you'll really feel a major difference um, once you reach about 150 to 200 pounds of weight reduction. One thing that I really love about this battery, I just love the um, the engraving that Mitch did over in Mealy Design. I know it's a little hard to see, but you can see where it says STI S209, 83 out of 209. Um, probably my best Probably the best part about this box is, is this feature. It's really subtle. You can't really see it unless you look closely, and I think it matches the engine bay really nicely. So, you know, huge thanks to Mitch over at Mealy Design. I highly recommend their battery mounts. Um, and, you know, contacting Mitch about the installation, he was so helpful. Um, Response right away in terms of installation uh, troubleshooting. Um, I'm just really glad with how this turned out. So, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think, how this battery looks. Um, you know, I think it's this is really the first modification that I did on the S209, and I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, it took a little bit of work, but you know, the final result, I think it matches the engine bay quite well. You know, it definitely gives it. A little bit more space I'd be interested to see if I can actually do spark plugs without having to remove this battery uh, because it does give you that room to actually fit tools in here to do spark plugs you know usually you'll have to remove the battery in order to get into this side um, it'll be interesting to see if I ever get to that point where I have to switch spark uh, to change spark plugs and see if I can get in there anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one